guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to study the ICD-10 CM coding guidelines. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so <laughs> you may have heard me once or twice say how supremely important it is um, to study your ICD-10 CM coding guidelines once per week while you are in your medical billing and coding program or if you are studying independently or if you are in the phase before your exam, right? You're studying. It is supremely important to read the coding guidelines. It is important because of the simple fact to be a strong medical coder is knowing those guidelines. That is part of being a strong medical coder and it cannot be emphasized enough. Simply looking up codes in the book does not a coder make, right? <laughs> uh, you have to know why. There's rules on why certain codes are sequenced a certain way or why we use this code and not that code. And that information you'll be able to find out in the coding guidelines. Now, in, this is the Optum book that I use. Most publishers will have the ICD-10 CM coding guidelines in them. However, you do have the option of going to CMS, the CMS website, uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, cms.gov, and you can be able to look at their website and get the official coding guidelines for free. Okay, they have them there. You can even Google ICD-10 CM coding guidelines, whatever year it is, this is 2023, uh, 2023 CMS, and the PDF will pop right up. Okay, guys, it is a simple Google search. Okay, uh, in the Optum book, it's at the front of the book. And, you know, this is where it all starts here. Now, in the book here, it is 36 pages, which comes out to 16 pages in total, right? 16 individual pages. But it comes out to that many pages. So if you're saying, well, Blue, um, how, you expect me to read all this tiny writing uh, <laughs> once uh, once per week? How, how often do I do this? Okay, so the thing is, guys, what I have thought of, one of the ways that I have, you know, tried to make it easy for you guys, because to do this, reading the guidelines, you have to do it in a way that it's going to be digestible for you. And it, do it in a way that is going to make it not so intimidating and not so where you can't achieve this goal. The goal is to get through the guidelines in their entirety once per week. And again, how do we do that? Sometimes we have to break it up. Okay. So since there are 16 individual pages, you can certainly break it up by reading four pages at a time per day, right? One, two, three, four. So you start with these first four pages and you read them. You read them, you look at the pages, you go over them, right? And as you read and you keep reading, what's going to end up happening is you're going to become a faster reader. A lot of people fail the tests, the medical coding certification exams, because they run out of time, because they read too slow, or they kept rereading and rereading and rereading, or they were just scared, you know, but most of the time it's because they run out of time because they take too long reading. Reading the coding guidelines while you're supplementing in your studies, right, is going to make you a faster reader and you're not going to have this issue. Your brain is going to be able to process information a lot faster than somebody who is not doing this and somebody who is just trying to look up codes and then just reporting them. If you don't know what you're doing, guys, it can be a big problem, not just for yourself, but for the doctors and for the patients that they serve. So you have to think about medical coders and medical coding and even medical billing. It's not just you. It is the patient. It is a doctor. It is a facility. It is all these people that depend on the revenue that comes from correct coding. Because when encounters are not coded properly, um, what happens is there's penalties and there's late fees and all this other stuff, right? Which is the penalties. Uh, but there's all of these things that happen. And so they're not able to recoup all the money that they would if the codes had been reported correctly the first time. This is why it is our responsibility 
to know the coding guidelines, not memorize them, guys, but be so familiar that we know and we're, we, we understand where to look when we have questions and that we know the rules so that if an audit does come, we are prepared and we know and we can stand up and say, oh, no, wait a second. It's this way because, you know, auditors are known to be wrong as well. OK, they're not always correct. There's things that they're wrong on, too. And again, somebody who knows the coding guidelines is going to know this. OK, so start off with these first four pages and read them front and back. All right. And after a while, it's not going to be so intimidating. And notice how my guidelines are clean. Now, I see some people who write a bunch of, you know, sidebar notes and things like that. And for some people, they need, they feel like they need it. You don't need it, guys. These guidelines are going to be here, right here when you're taking your test. Um, they are with the book. So the book goes in there with you. Okay, so you don't have to worry about thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to memorize this. You don't need to. The book is already right there. So you take the next day, right? You start off maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday. <laughs> um, you start with those first four pages and then you go to the next day. Because if you take four days to read these, these pages, right? Because there's 16 pages total all together. And you take four days. You can skip a day in between. You can go the next day. All right. You can start off with a page in the morning. All right. And while you're drinking your coffee, you can drink, you can drink, <laughs> you can uh, read, uh, read a page, uh, your lunch break, you can read another page. Um, and in the evening, all you'll have is two more pages to go. And that'll be it, guys. It is so easy to make it digestible for yourself. And again, you don't have to read every single day. You don't have to um, take all the time to be able to do this. You don't have to even do a bunch of these pages in one sitting. Four pages is good enough. Okay. And then you take another day and you see you're already here at the end. That's it. So four, four days to read four pages a day. And then you've already read your coding guidelines for that, for that week. And it's not going to make sense to you guys. It won't. There's going to be things that they're going to be written in here kind of funny. Like, I don't get that. <laughs> uh, but the more you read it, when you find yourself in that situation where you're having to reference those guidelines or something like that, then you're going to be able to be prepared because you're going to know exactly where to go in the guidelines. And another fun thing that you can do is when once you've read a page, right? You can stop and take a break and then you can write down everything off the top of your head that you remember. Okay. Again, you're not trying to memorize. You just want to get familiar. What did the first page talk about? Write it down in a notebook. Okay. The first page was talking about all the conventions, the format, um, and it excludes one, excludes two. You can ask yourself, what does excludes one mean? What does excludes two mean? Um, what, uh, you know, what is code first? What are you talking about there? You can write this stuff down. They say the best way to learn something or to be able to retain information is to be able to teach it back to somebody else. That's the best way to learn anything is when you can teach it back to somebody else. You're just teaching it back to yourself. <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't understand what we do in the first place, right? And because they don't understand what we do, it's even more difficult uh, sometimes to explain. But by doing this simple exercise of, of, you know, reading a page and then writing down what you know, writing down what you understand, and then maybe doing a column of things that you don't understand about what you're reading. It's okay. If you, if you write it down, it's going to be off of your mind. And when it's off of your mind, it's going to clear that part of your brain to say, okay, we have room for other information. We have room to build our confidence because Hey, even though we don't understand this one thing, we do understand all of these other things. And once you start seeing all the things that you do understand, all the things that, you know, do make sense to you when you're, when you're writing them out, you're going to start to build your confidence a lot quicker than again, somebody who is not doing that. Somebody who is not taking the time and somebody who's not putting in that effort. 
to do great things, we have to put in effort. There's going to be times that you're going to be tired. You're going to be frustrated. There's going to be times when you want to just, you know, I'm just going to put this away because I, I'm just so tired of this. I don't get it. It's too much. It's too much. The more you face it head on, the more you are going to get comfortable with it, the more it's not going to be so scary because the things that scare us are the things that we don't know, right? Um, or the things that we don't understand. But the more that we try to meet the challenge, the more that we say, hey, we may show up. We may be uh, <laughs> cussing up a storm, but we're going to be here and we're going to meet this and we're going to understand this. And looking at these guidelines, and again, nobody can, nobody can touch you if you understand the guidelines. There is not a single person that can say anything about your knowledge, your knowledge base, the fact that you're a brand new coder or the fact that you have years of experience in a certain clinic or anything. There's nobody that can tell you anything if you know the guidelines, if you know those guidelines. And that's all it takes is just that little bit of effort. There is no app. There is no, oh, uh, do this, uh, do this little quick thing. No, it's all about learning the slow way. Now, I have a fellow Texan that I love to listen to, Rick. <laughs> He's got his channel, Think Like a Horse. He's all about horses. But I love Rick. And why do I love Rick? Because Rick is very much common sense. Rick has been an instructor. And he has said the thing that I love, which is the slow way is a fast way. If you learn the slow way, it's going to stick. You're going to be more you know, your, your knowledge is going to be more comprehensive than somebody who's trying to learn quick. People who try to learn quick are not going to be able to retain it as well. There's going to be a lot of holes and patches that they, they just don't understand because they have tried to speed through. You cannot speed through this, guys. You can't speed through learning the guidelines. All you can do is try to make it so familiar to you. All right. Because, again, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school, all right? And it's doctors who write this stuff, scholars <laughs> who write these guidelines. They are the ones who hammer out all these details. And for the people who are complaining that it's not written in a way that's very understandable, that's the same thing like the law, okay? And lawyers go to school for years to understand that stuff. Medical coders and, and people who study medical billing and coding, they get nine months uh, in a good program, nine months, 12 months, or 18 months. You know, these little fast-paced medical coding programs that make a mockery of our profession, which really upsets me, um, that are trying to, you know, turn out these uh, coders at uh, two months or four months or six months. Ridiculous, right? Right. Because they're telling everybody, oh, yeah, these are coders because they could pass a test. But do they understand? And even if you are in one of those programs, those four-month or six-month programs, doesn't mean that you can't get yourself there, guys. That's what my channel is all about. My channel is all about trying to show you guys this is how you fish, okay? <laughs> I talked about that before. If you, uh, the saying goes, if you give a man a fish, you feed a man for a day, right? Or if you teach a man or a person to fish, you feed him for a lifetime, okay? So that's the thing that you got to think about. So like Rick says, if the slow way is the fast way. If you learn the slow way, you're going to be a lot faster down the road than the people who are trying to learn fast. And then when they get out into the real world, then they're like, oh, wait, what do we do? I don't understand. I'm so confused. I'm lost. Don't be those people, guys. Don't be those people. And just because we go through... Uh, trade schools and and um, these these uh, self study programs doesn't mean we can't be fantastic medical coders. That takes effort and it takes um, endurance. <laughs> it takes strength and it takes uh, commitment. It takes devotion. It takes devotion to be reading these things when you don't feel like it. Looking at the pages when you don't feel like reading. Listening to the guidelines that you can uh, listen to when you when you go to the CMS website and you download. Most computers now, they have a read aloud feature. 
and you can listen to them. You can listen to the guidelines while you are washing dishes or while you're um, cooking or doing something like that or while you're you know, in your office area and you're just by yourself. You can listen to those guidelines, guys. And you can listen for 15 minutes at a time. Think, imagine how much information you can listen to in 15 minutes, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you guys listen to me for at least 20 minutes, <laughs> 25 minutes sometimes. But it's because there's so much to say. Right. And how many thousands of words am I speaking during this time? It's the same thing with these guidelines. You can be listening to them and you can be listening to them over and over. Because as a as one wise doctor once said, uh, the key to adult education is repetition. That that could not be more true. Right. The more you surround yourself with this stuff, the more you read these guidelines, you take the time, you do the simple act of reading four pages at a time guys really and it's going to be so familiar to you that you're not going to need all those silly notes you're not going to need all those silly tabs it's just going to be like second nature but a lot of people don't have the patience to get to that point where um they've been doing it so many times that they're comfortable with it they want that information now. They want to be able to memorize it now. They want to be having the the all of the perks of knowing all of the stuff. They want it right now when it takes people years to build that knowledge. You all are having the benefit of getting my knowledge that I had spent up until this point 15 years to build. Y'all are getting those tips. And the tips that is really meant to help all of you, because I saw that need. I saw that need for people to know these things and to have somebody tell them, this is how you do it. You take four pages at a time. You read those four pages. You give yourself a break. And then the next day, you do another four pages again. And then that's all it takes. And you rinse and repeat, <laughs> literally rinse and repeat. And you start all over again. And then by the time you know it, this is not intimidating to you. All of these words, they're not intimidating. Just like the people who are working out, the people who are lifting weights. Do you think those people who lift all those weights, those, you know, those, those power lifters, do you think they start off lifting all that weight? No, they build little by little by little. It's the same thing that you got to do. Starting with the first four pages, right? You start one, two, three, four. Boom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I never heard of a single person regretting reading the guidelines again and again and again. Not one person has told me it was a waste of time. Everybody that I have told who's listened, who's followed that advice, because you can, what is the saying? Well, in Texas, we say uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. The people who have followed my advice have always come back and said, Blue, thank you. Thank you for telling me to read those guidelines because I'll tell you what, that helped me. It helped me. And they knew it helped them. So that's why I'm telling all of you, you start with these guidelines. You take four pages in a day. There's seven days in the week, folks. Seven days in a week. And this is part of your study time. You take and you, you do your coffee in the morning. <laughs> You read a page. Your lunchtime, read a page. And then you got two more pages. And that's it. And that's your day. Plus, of course, doing the work. Doing the exercises in the workbooks that I've recommended uh, time and time again. <laughs> uh, reading those. Working through those. And you're going to build your skills so quickly that it's going to be amazing. And when you look back on all the time that you spent, because a person 
who has been spending 20 hours per week studying and reading the coding guidelines and working through those workbooks is going to be a lot further along than the person who's not doing that. And the person who's just sitting there trying to look up codes in the back because they just want to pass a test. But then when they get out in the real world and they get tested and they start asking them questions about the guidelines, because that's happened sometimes on those pre-assessment, pre-employment assessment tests, you know, that these employers give, they will ask you questions about the guidelines. I know <laughs> because I've had that before where they ask you questions about the guidelines and you have to sit there and think, oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah, according to this section and according to this and according to this, they don't want you to quote the exact passage but at least know where it is or at least have an idea what is it about uh, sepsis coding what is it about injury coding external causes those are the types of things that people who know the guidelines are going to immediately have the answers to what is it that you want to (laughs) know right so again it's not a waste of time this is a serious investment in your success as a medical coder as you're building a future in a brand new career. Because for a lot of you, you haven't been in a career that was medical. I know I sure came in with a, with no idea about medical. I didn't even want to do medical. <laughs> uh, but I always say medical coding found me. And I'm okay with that. Because now I'm in a fantastic career that I love. And I have said, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Well... I haven't been working since 2014 when I had my aha moment. I figured it out. But some people never figure it out. Some people will never have this feeling. And I am so blessed to be able to have this feeling and say that I have this. Because I figured it out. And I'm giving you all the hack. (laughs) Uh, If if I'm going to put it into current terms right (laughs) what is what is a, a coding hack a coding hack is reading your coding guidelines once per week in their entirety reading four pages at a time all right if you're if you're downloading the one from cms it's 120 something pages i think 118 or 120 pages i have to look again i forgot um but again it's the same idea you just divide it over how many days you want to read right and even though it's more pages in online, it's just because of the font size, guys. That's all, that's all it is. It's the same guidelines as in here. This font size is just a lot smaller. This the font size online can be made bigger if you want to read, if you want to like look at them and read them. Uh, but if you don't, it's okay. You can always listen. <laughs> And I think listening is great because um, sometimes it helps to have like that just repetitive, you know, going again and again. But don't burn yourselves out, guys. Just do it like I'm suggesting. Just do the four pages at a time if you're reading from the book. If you're, um, you know, reading from the um, from the ones online, then just divide it over four days. And then that's however many pages you need to have it read to you, right? Um, your computer, you can have it read to you. So just do that so that way... Um, and you take it in small doses like that, it's going to stick so much, so much better than if you just try to jump on it all at one time. Okay. That's my advice anyway. And that's how you study the coding guidelines. It's simple guys. It is very simple. It's not anything that's hard. This is the old fashioned way because the old fashioned way is a good way. Uh, (laughs) you know, people ask me all the time too for like, uh, Oh, what's an app? You don't need an app to learn this stuff guys. All you need is yourself, your brain, okay? This is why artificial intelligence will not beat us because we have critical thinking skills. People want to start neglecting their critical thinking skills and yeah, sure. (laughs) Um, You think robots won't take over? Okay, well, whatever. Uh, But they won't think like a human will think. All they know, all artificial intelligence knows is how to read uh, code and that's it. Zeros and ones, that's all it does. It just, it's as smart as a person who's programming it. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. But read your coding guidelines, guys. Don't worry about all that other riffraff. Read your coding guidelines. They need us. We have the critical thinking skills. I'm just saying. Um, So read those. Try it out for a week. See how it works for you. You'll be proud of yourself once you've read it once per week. If it takes you twice, 
two two weeks to finish the guidelines through and through, that's totally fine. But you made progress, and that's the important thing. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all next time. Bye.